hello everybody welcome back to my channel my name's rachel and this is stitched up so today's video it is my turn to talk to you about a gift to november if you are quite active on social media you probably already know about this challenge but this is being run by adam from adam sews and the lovely allison who is so like dotty and it's a month-long challenge in november for us to inspire you guys to sew up some of your fabrics that you might have languishing in your stash and creating a gift for a loved one, a friend, etc. Handmade gift for the upcoming festive season. And the plan for it being November is all around getting all those handmade gifts out of the way in November so that you can just chill and relax and enjoy the festive season. So it's my turn today along with the lovely Becky from Notes in the Sewing Room. So yes, you have got two of us today giving you our ideas and some inspiration for handmade gifts that are predominantly sewn that you might like to try yourself for loved ones over the coming holiday season. Right, I have made loads of notes, but before we get into it, better tell you what I'm wearing because people always want to know, don't they? I am wearing a Tabitha tea by Tilly and the Buttons. And this is made with actually a Tilly and the Buttons fabric. It's the Hans jersey that you can see here. It does look a little bit different to the normal Tabitha tee because I altered the sleeves to make them cap sleeve because the normal sleeve is just a straight short sleeve. And I always find that that cuts right across the widest part of my upper arm, which I don't think is the most flattering look for me. So I altered the cap sleeve just to make, uh, sorry, I altered the short sleeve to make it a little cap sleeve. And I quite like that. The only thing I don't like about it is the neckband. I think the neckband is quite sloppy on this. I'm not saying the pattern, but my version of it is, yeah, it's a bit sloppy. So I tend to just wear this under a sweater for when I'm dog walking or just around the house like I am today. Anyway, let's get back to the challenge. So yesterday's vlogs were by Sew Notes and Stitch Hem Sew and tomorrow you've got the lovely Dizzy Quilts and Sews and Christine Sews a lot. So there are loads of vloggers that are doing a bit of a vlog tour throughout November and it's been really, really good actually to see just what people are coming up with, what ideas people are coming up with and it's really good inspiration. So the plan is with these projects that both I and all the other vloggers that are hopefully inspiring you over the course of November is that we will be sharing our works in progress over on Instagram with the hashtag a gift to November whip and on the 30th of November we will be posting on Instagram our finished projects and there are lots of sponsors for this challenge and lots of great prizes up for grabs and I would love to win a prize I never win anything honestly yeah I I never win anything I'm just putting this out there right now and I would love to win a prize it would be so awesome but anyway let's get on with my projects I don't know about you, but every year I have plans to make things and time runs away with me like it always does. And it gets to sort of this time and I think, oh no, it's nearly Christmas in six weeks. And I wanted to make all these things for my family and my loved ones and friends, etc. And I'm just going to end up going to the shops instead. And it's really soul destroying when I have such a huge stash. So I have been rummaging upstairs in the old sewing room because I have got loads of craft fabrics and I think this is a really good opportunity to sort of move away a little bit from dressmaking and do some of those craft projects that we all like to do what you know when the weather's rubbish which it is today because it's been rubbish for weeks to be honest up in Yorkshire it's just rain and miserable and horrible but anyway um yeah, it's one of those things that you want to just snuggle down inside and just get all crafty and have fun. Maybe put some Christmas music on, which I will probably be doing later when I start my projects. But I've been doing some research about the kinds of people that I want to sew for. And I'm going to be honest with you, some of my family would not appreciate handmade gifts because that's just them. And that's absolutely fine. But lots of my family and friends really do and I've been looking for projects that I think they will love and not just that I think they will love but I think they will use as well because as we all know a lot of effort goes into handmade projects doesn't it 
And as some of you may know, if you've been following me over the last month or so, we're expecting a little baby. Not me personally. Thank God that those days are far behind me. But in our family, our daughter is having a baby in March. And I'm going to be sewing some projects for the baby as well, because that's just what you do, isn't it? It went when you're having a baby, it's exciting. So let me talk you through the projects that I've come up with and I will show you some of the fabrics that I've chosen and hopefully it might inspire you to go and have a look as well. Right, first things first, the baby. Let's start with the baby. Now, obviously I know what my daughter is having as in the gender of this little grandchild that's coming in March. And it was really interesting to see in, in my vlog where we sort of had the reveal when it was my birthday vlog. I'll link to that up here. It was really interesting to see some of the comments because a few of you think that she's having twins. And I will say no more about that because I am not disclosing anything at this stage. But I wanted to do some sewing for this baby. So these are very gender non-specific projects that I'm sharing with you. Obviously, I am going to be sewing some gen very gender specific projects, but I can't share those with you, unfortunately. So, right. The first thing I am going to share with you is I'm going to make this baby a quilt and it's going to be a quilt that she can either, and when I say she, I'm talking about my daughter, she can either use it as a quilt for the Moses basket or the crib or for the cot or also for pushchair pram that kind of thing and my daughter is mad about Winnie the Pooh she grew up with Winnie the Pooh it was her nursery decor and I used to stick her in front of Winnie the Pooh films when I was trying to get on with the housework when she was little as you do and she just still loves Winnie the Pooh to this day it's a real big thing of hers particularly the traditional Winnie the Pooh because there's like two versions there's a Disney one as well so I've been raiding my stash I've got tons of fat quarters look you know fat quarter stash and more fat quarters so I dug out these ones which I found in my stash which are actually from Aldi which is a discounted supermarket in the UK if you're not from the UK and these were a pack of four Winnie the Pooh fat quarters look aren't they just so adorable and ignore the fact that some of the that this is blue because my daughter is very much of the opinion that it doesn't matter whether you know, you can dress girls in blue, you can dress boys in pink. She, 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 She's just not bothered. So this is going to be a quilt. I am going to use these fat quarters along with some white cotton, white 100% cotton fabric I have in my stash to make a quilt for her. This has just come today, which is the batting that I am going to use to back my quilt with. And well, not to back, back it because obviously it needs to be backed with more cotton fabric, doesn't it? Oh my word. Anyway, you know what I mean? This is going to be the batting for the quilt. And this is a bamboo batting that has just arrived from First for Fabrics, which I have purchased. I think because this is a natural batting, which obviously for young babies, we need to think about natural fibres, don't we? So I think this will be really, really good in the quilt to make sure the baby can regulate its temperature. Well, obviously babies can't regulate the temperature, but it will keep the baby warm when it needs to be and cool when it needs to be, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think it makes sense there. Anyway, the pattern that I have chosen is the Whirlwind Quilt Pattern, and I'll put a little picture of it here. This is a free pattern that I found, and it's I will link to it down below in the description box so you can go and check it out. It looks fairly straightforward, she says. I haven't got a lot of experience at making quilts, but I want to do something that's quite interesting, but that will, you know, showcase these fabrics and also that, you know, is going to be quite nice to um, to give my daughter as a gift for the baby at Christmas. So um, you get a template, which I've already printed off, which is this one here. So this is the template that you print off to use for your fat quarters. I think the size of this quilt is actually really large. 
and the pattern does recommend you use sort of nine to ten i think i've got four fat quarters here but obviously this is a baby size quilt so i'm not going to make it massive i'm just going to put some of these blocks together stitch them together and then when i think we've got enough it, it will be done so that's my first plan that i want to make because i think that's just going to look really cute for this baby um and hopefully it'll be a little keepsake for her as well because when my daughter was a baby and we had winnie the pooh cot bedding and she still has her cot quilt she keeps it now it's and has it in bed with her and yeah it, it wasn't handmade it was a bought one but yeah she uh, she loves that so hopefully this because it's handmade will be a nice little keepsake for her as well and the baby can sort of grow up with it that's my first project i have got lots of projects that i want to talk to you about and i don't know how far i am going to get with these projects so that's the quilt and i have got lots and lots of ideas for this challenge and i am I'm under no illusion that i am going to get all of these done because as usual i have all these ideas and plans and do they ever come to fruition sometimes they do and sometimes life just gets in the way but as much as possible I'm going to try and get lots of these things done I think the major projects I want to get out of the way first the ones that are really important to me um like the quilt for instance and then we'll see we'll see how far we get but yeah I I am under no illusion that I will get these done all in November I might still be doing some of these as part of vlogmas but we shall see we shall see right next project is a let me just get my notes so i can talk to you about them the next project is going to be a blanket now as you know most of us that live in the uk and in colder climates i guess at the minute are having a bit of a cost of living crisis shall we say we're all thinking about keeping warm without using heating and trying to keep our costs down as much as possible as we move into the winter period and i found this amazing free pattern for a blanket that i am going to make for my daughter so it is called the mermaid tail adult blanket now i remember seeing these around a few years ago where you could buy these blankets that were like shaped like a mermaid and they were mostly for children but my daughter loved them at the time and she wanted me to buy a one and I never got round to it to be honest because I thought they were a little bit gimmicky but anyway I'm gonna make a one because I think you know this is the perfect time isn't it to make something like this that hopefully she will get lots of use out of over the winter period so I have found two gorgeous fabrics. You do need quite a lot of fabric for this, actually. I think it comes all together. It's about four and a half metres, something like that. But fortunately, I do have quite a lot of fabric, if you didn't already know. But I have found two fantastic fabrics for this project in my stash. Now, about four years ago, I bought this gorgeousness, which is a beautiful pink fleece fabric with glow in the dark stars and moons on it it is amazing it is so soft and i bought this with the intention originally of making bronte a dressing gown and i've never got around to it so it's now going to be a blanket for her it's going to be a mermaid blanket and the other fabric that i am pairing with it is this white fleece because i think they will go together really really well and i think for this pattern it's going to look fantastic so i have got about three meters of this and a good two two and a half meters of this so i've got plenty to make this blanket and i'm really excited to have a go at this i think this is just going to be amazing so yeah and also it means that i'm using up some quite bulky fabric that is sitting in my stash and has been there for quite some time this white fleece is just your general everyday white fleece there's nothing exciting about it i think i got this from colville fabrics when they were still around and this i got from a fabric shop in harrogate when i went to the knitting and stitching show with my friend about four years ago we went to the show and then afterwards we had a little look around harrogate and one of the shops there had this so i bought this from there so that's going to be my number two project moving forward i am going to make a handmade gift for my sister and my sister is one member of my family that 
she is very she does like handmade things but she has very very exacting tastes shall we say and she wouldn't just appreciate well she would appreciate it but she wouldn't use she wouldn't just use your average i don't know but anyway i have managed to find a gift that i can make for my sister that i think she will really love and it is a origami market bag again this is a tutorial that i will link to down below i'll put a picture of it here and it's to create a reusable bag that you can obviously use to go shopping etc and i really like this and i think she will really like it as well she's not into really sort of patterned multicolored fabrics that kind of thing she's a very she likes very plain understated things shall we say but i have got some remnants of some washed cotton which is navy and also i found this one as well which is a sort of navy steely gray colored linen fabric in my stash this was i think used to make a apron that I made for myself about three years ago and I'm not actually sure what I've used this for in the past but the two really good sized remnants here and I've also got this which is like a heavier weight cotton fabric it's very Scandi in design and I thought these together I could make a couple of these origami bags because this will be the little handle as you can see from the picture and I think she will really like these and probably get lots of use out of them because she can just stash it in her her bag when she goes shopping and then she's got a nice reusable bag that she'll be hopefully <laughs> happy to walk around and be seen with so that is going to be my next little gift project as well for her then next up is a gift for my great niece which is my sister's daughter's daughter who is now five and some of you that have watched my vlogs for a while may remember me showing you this fabric when i came back from so too the last time i was up in newcastle and we went to first for fabrics and i bought these fabrics there with the intention of making my great niece a little t-shirt for christmas and this is the fabric that I got. It's this beautiful cotton jersey with snowmen on. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And I also got some of the red ribbing as well to match. And I am going to make the brindle and twi twig ringer tee, which again is a free pattern. And I think that goes up to something like a age six, something like that. And I'm going to make, or it might even be more actually, it could be even more, I can't remember to be honest. But I have made one already for the baby and I'm going to trace it off in the bigger size because my great niece is five. And I'm going to make her one of these for Christmas because I think that'll just be a sweet little gift for her. So this is beautiful, beautiful fabric. It's really good quality. I am hoping, I think I've got about a good metre of this, or it might even be a metre and a half. I'm hoping I might have enough to make the baby a little t-shirt for next Christmas because obviously it's not going to be here this Christmas. So that is my next little project. Right, next up, the husband. So every year I like to make something for Martin for Christmas and usually it's a shirt or t-shirt and this year he's getting a t-shirt. So I have this fabric in my stash which is upside down whales and sharks. There we go. So yes, this is a cotton jersey with a navy background that I got from Northern Monkey Makes and I'm going to make him a t-shirt out of this. I will probably use the Ellie and Mac t-shirt. I'll put a picture of it here. I can't remember the name of it. I think it's just the men's basic tee and yes, I've used that before for him and it works really well. It's sized perfectly. So it's, you know, it's a straightforward t-shirt. So yeah, I think I'm going to make him that because he loves sharks and I'm hoping that there'll be, well, there should be plenty left because there's quite, I've got quite a fair bit of this fabric here. I'm hoping there'll be enough that I can make a little romper for the baby out of the remnants as well. That will be exciting. So yes, because Bronte loves sharks as well and i think it will be perfect for that so that's hubby sorted i will probably just use some ribbing from my stash and it should be a fairly quick easy make for him for christmas next project is something that's a little bit more sentimental now 
I was obviously helping my brother sort out through all my dad's things a few weeks ago and Bronte was very keen for me to have some of his old shirts and jumpers so that I could make a memory bear and a memory quilt type thing for her and I will do that at some point but I was having a little look at ideas for handmade gifts etc and I came across a beanie out of a sweater and I thought this is a really good idea I will put a picture of it here and it does look like it's just been knitted which I just think is amazing because it's not it's actually made from an old sweater so you know if your hubby is anything like mine or if you haven't got a hubby but you have a male partner or even a female partner you know but particularly with men you know sometimes if they're anything like mine he cannot be bothered to root through all his clothes to find something that might go with what he's wearing that day. He just opens his drawer, pulls the t-shirt that's on top and throws it on and gets on with it. So consequently, he ends up most of the time wearing the same two t-shirts over and over and over. Is there anybody else that does that? So what I'm saying to you is, if you raid your partner's like clothing stash, dig out an old jumper that they don't even remember that they've got they won't even know anything about it and you can make them a fab sustainable Christmas gift so I'm going to make Bronte a beanie I'm going to make a this beanie out of this jumper which was one of my dad's now it's an old well when I say it's old it's not old it's practically brand new Marks and Spencer's jumper that I probably bought him one Christmas to be honest and yeah I think it's got this lovely sort of cable effect you probably can't see it very well because of the light that's shining but it's got obviously the band at the bottom which will work really well for the band around the beanie and I'm going to make a I'm going to cut this up which feels a bit wrong but at least it's going to turn into something that's going to be really sentimental and mean something to her so I'm going to make her the beanie out of one of my dad's jumpers and then every time she wears it she can think of him can't she so I thought that was a really nice little fun thing to do and it should be fairly quick this tutorial again I will leave it down below for you it looks really quick and I might even consider doing some with some of Martin's old jumpers thinking about it anyway finally well I'm saying finally it's not finally I can't leave Isaac out can I and every year generally I make Isaac a hoodie so I don't know what pattern I'm going to use this time because I would prefer to do a raglan sleeve last year I think I made him the Tuesday hoodie by Ellie and Mac and that's not raglan it's a I don't think it's raglan I can't remember to be honest but anyway I just want to make him a plain hoodie but just with raglan sleeves so that the sleeves are a different colour to the main body and I have dug out this navy fleece backed sweatshirt and some orange French terry. They aren't quite the same weight but I think what I'll do is I will probably use this for the main body and orange for the sleeves and so I think they go together quite well and I think that will make a really nice hoodie for him. So if anybody's got any ideas of, I don't particularly want to buy another pattern because at the end of the day, you know, men's hoodies, they're all, they're all the same, aren't they? You know, once you've got one hoodie, you only need to just alter your cut lines and things, your design lines, and, and then you've got a new pattern, haven't you? So I don't particularly want to buy another men's hoodie pattern. Uh, but if anybody knows any tutorials for a men's raglan hoodie I'm sure I can just google it to be fair but that's going to be the plan for him right so they're the main things that I want to get made but I also have found another few tutorials for some really good gift ideas that I'd really like to have a go at because I've got a few friends and family and I'm hoping they won't be watching this because I won't mention who's who but I suppose it's going to be all right because I'm, I'm, I'm not, well, so I've got, a, I've got some ideas for some other little, lovely little handmade gifts for some friends and other members of the family. And the first one that I wanted to talk to you about is oven gloves. So I think I'm going to make a pair of oven gloves for my sister-in-law for Christmas. She won't be watching this. She doesn't even know I've got a channel. Anyway, um, the pattern that I'm going to use is the one that Tamlin did for So Hayley Jane. 
and it, she, she did this tutorial back in May earlier this year. I'll link to it down below. And it's it's a brilliant tutorial to make a pair of oven gloves with fat quarters. And as you've seen earlier in this vlog, I have loads of fat quarters. And so I think my, I know my brother and sister-in-law have just had their kitchen redone. And I thought, and my, my sister-in-law loves handmade gifts. So I thought that would be a really nice thing to make. So I do need to get some batting because I think you have to use proper thermal batting for, um, for oven gloves. So I will need to purchase that. But otherwise I've got so much cotton fabric and so many, so many packs of fat quarters that I should be able to, make something that all coordinates and will work well with their kitchen so that's going to be another project that i want to get done and then i have another friend that i won't say where she works because it will give it will give it away because this person might be watching <laughs> might be watching this this vlog but anyway i am i know that she takes a packed lunch to work with it every day and i found this lovely little tutorial for a lunch tote Again, it's free pattern and you can, you know, use any stash fabric. Now, I don't know about you, but I've got, from years ago when I first sort of got into sewing, before I really got into dressmaking, I bought loads of like cottons and even when I first started dressmaking, I bought loads of cottons because you do, don't you? You want to make all the novelty stuff and then you soon realise, or some of us soon realise that actually you don't want to wear the novelty stuff <laughs> because that's, yeah, well, we won't go there. But anyway, I have a massive bag. Let me just show you this. Oh, it's so heavy. I've got this full of, if I can just show you, cottons, look. And they're all 100% cotton, all different fabrics, patterns, designs, etc. I've got tons of stuff, as if you didn't know that. And so I am going to find something from there that I can make this little lunch tote for my friend so she can take her pack lunch to work with her every day. I thought that would be really nice and a really nice little gift. And I know that she appreciates handmade gifts. So that's going to be another one. And then I also found, I also found this, which I just thought is such a good idea. It's a little, it's called the A-Frame Organiser. Again, it's a free tutorial and you can modify this for you know, if for a teenage girl, for instance, to put a bits of makeup in and a makeup brushes, or even for somebody who loves sewing, that they can put all their, you know, little sewing notions in like seam ripper and little scissors and marker pens, etc. So that it's there to hand. I really like that this is sort of stood up because especially when I'm sewing, I think I might even make one of these for myself because I think it's great for, you know, just literally grabbing something out of it. And I think these are absolutely fantastic idea. So I'm going to have a go at making one of these as well for a friend, which I think she'll really appreciate that. And again, I will just use fabric from this massive stash of quilting cottons and remnants etc i'm going to find a few things that might coordinate together and work really well so i think that will be really nice to have a go at and then i've also found when i was rooting around in my stash i also found this does anybody else have this stuff so this is actually a shower curtain look it's never been opened and i bought this not for use in my shower i bought it for the actual plastic fabric because i think back when i was crafting years ago i'd read somewhere that if you make toiletry bags or anything like that this stuff you can cut up to use to make it wipeable so i bought this with that intention and it's just still in its pack because it went into my stash like these things do and never got used but i found it rooting about today so i have found this which is a really nice tutorial for one of those roll toiletry bags and i'm going to make one of these for bronte again i might even make one for myself i might make one for some of my other friends as well because i think these are really good idea for you know when you're staying somewhere else overnight or whatever and you just want to take those few bits together i don't know about you but i have so many little little bags because i don't have anything that takes that, that contains everything and so everything just goes into all these little cosmetic bags and to have one thing like this in 
where everything can just be in it and it's wipeable, I think will be really, really good for me. So I'm going to make one for Bronte as well, because whenever she comes here, she always just throws everything in a bag. And I think this will be a really nice little gift for her. And it will give me the opportunity to finally use this shower curtain that I think I probably got from Asda or somewhere. Oh no, it's Tesco's. Look, it says Tesco on there. Bought it from Tesco. It must have been about two pounds or something like that. Right, last but not least, because I know this vlog has gone on forever, I found this great little tutorial for fabric cubes, fabric baby cubes, and you have the option, they're sort of like little soft cubes that baby can play with or squeeze or nuzzle or whatever and you do have the option I think with this particular tutorial I'll, I'll link down below of putting the rattles in as well so I'm going to have a look at that because I'm always a bit worried about you know if the stitching comes undone and the baby gets the rattle out and chokes on it and oh uh, anyway um you know hopefully my skills will be be okay and it will not come undone but yeah I'm gonna have a look at that I may put a rattle in I may not I'll see how I feel about that but yeah I thought this would be a really good really good project to use up some of my fat quarters as well and I think what I might do is applique applique some alphabet initials as well so that I can put those on um the you know like ABC that kind of thing and just applique them on the the squares I think that would be a really nice cute gift to do as well for the baby so lots and lots and lots of options I have as usual I've probably completely overfaced myself with this I think I have all the time in the world and I don't but you know I've got lots of things to think about lots of ideas and I hope that I've given you guys some ideas as well and some inspiration for projects that you might want to try for some of your loved ones as well as I mentioned earlier, please go check out all the other vloggers that are taking part in this month monthly challenge. There are some fantastic ideas out there and I think it's, you know, it's just a really good opportunity to get some inspiration from other people for handmade sewing gifts that you might not have not, not might not have seen before and that might work for some of your loved ones too. If you do decide to take part, please make sure that if you want to post on Instagram as you're making it, that you use the hashtag a gift to November whip throughout the month of November and tag Alison and Adam, which are so like Dotty and Adam Sews. I'll leave their, their hashtags down below in that post as well so that they can see them. And then on November the 30th, you can post your finished make to be entered into the challenge prize draw and I hope I'm going to win something this year that will be so cool right I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it there guys because I want to get on with some of these projects while I have some time but I will be back with you really soon take care bye